Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It's TK Friday again, and today we'll be working on this image. There's a lot of new techniques you're going to learn today, so you don't want to miss anything. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Yes, it is TK Friday again, and I want to give a great big shout out to Steve Ehrlich, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Steve. Steve has been watching my channel for a long time, and Steve is such a great person. He shares my videos all over the place, and I really thank you for that, Steve. This image was taken in Batstow, New Jersey. It's a historical site dating back to before the Revolutionary War in America. We'll be working on this image today, and you're going to learn a lot of new techniques today, so you don't want to miss anything. But first, I must tell you this. There is a new version of the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. This is TK8 version 1.1.3. It's now available. I'll link you to the uh, Good Light Journal, Tony Kuiper's blog, and he'll tell you on this blog how to get that new update. So it's very important you want to get it. I'm not going to be getting into it today because a lot of the stuff is behind the scenes that we really won't notice that much, but it's an important, significant update, so you want to get it. And you can read about some of the different uh, fixes that have been made and changes, so you can read it on this blog. So check that out. I will leave a link in the description below for you to get to this blog. And by the way, if you don't already own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can... Click on it and it'll take you to the website where you can purchase the panel and there's training videos and a lot of great stuff in here. And if you'll use my promo code DK15 at checkout, you'll save an additional 15% off anything that you purchase off of this website. And when you do that, I make a small commission and it helps for me to keep these TK Friday videos coming your way. And also you can get some linear profiles free for your camera. There's a link here for that as well on this page. And now to the edit. Now I'm starting out in Lightroom and I do my typical things where I use the linear profile. Uh, I just kept the white balance as shot. And uh, by the way, this camera is a Nikon D850. Some basic adjustments, a little exposure, like a stop, almost a stop and a half of exposure. Uh, a tiny little bit of contrast. I pulled back in the highlights, opened the shadows up slightly. Uh, Set the white and black point. I'm a little bit clipped right here, so I'm going to pull that back. Okay, to there. And it did nothing with texture, clarity, or dehaze. A little bit of vibrance and a tiny bit of saturation. As far as detail, I just use the, use the default sharpening here. No noise reduction, because this image is ISO 400. really doesn't need it. And as far as lens corrections, okay... Because this was shot with, let's remove chromatic aberrations first and check the image out when I click on enable uh, profile corrections and you'll notice it really straightens up because it's a really wide lens. What is it? Like a 12 millimeter f2.8 something here. Uh, but anyway, that does a really good job of straightening it out. Now there's still some problem here where you can see where it's where this line is not straight up and down. I'd like it to be straight up and down. So here's what I did to take care of that. I just went into transform and I'm going to do a guided transform. Now you can click here or you can click right here. And this little magnifying glass loop comes up. And what you do is you want to find a vertical line that you can run down like here, right here. And it, that zoom tool helps you to really get in close and you draw the line down. And I'm just going to keep following this till I get near the bottom, which is right here and I'm just going to go like that unclick my mouse so I was holding my mouse the whole time I was clicking down and then I'm going to click here click and then you have to hold the mouse down and drag down and basically what we're trying to do is straighten up this image and you'll see what happens here I'm just going to go right to here release it but watch how it just everything straightens up and that's all I did and then if you click here you put that tool away but you can see here is the before and here is the after. But it straightens it up and it makes things look just a little bit nicer, in my opinion. 
By the way, I always leave this constrained crop checked on because if some of the image gets cut off, it just fills itself back in. So I recommend that. And the only other thing I did was I cropped the image. I'll click on the crop tool. As you can see, I just gave it a different crop. You don't have to crop it, but for me, I like this crop. I gave it a 16 by 9 more cinematic crop. And I just, for me, it just feels a little bit better. And then all I have to do is click done and then right click on the image, go to edit in. Uh, edit in Photoshop 2022, and it'll send us over there. I'm already there, so let's just get started. And here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to do my favorite starting procedure, and that for me is to come up to the luminosity masks, grab a mids three, and so far I'm incorporating this in my workflow. I think it's working out really well for me. I'll keep experimenting, but so far I like it. And then all I do is I'll put this to a color grading tool. Now, all that mid 3 is doing is protecting me from clipping my shadows and highlights. I'm using the uh, color grading tool to adjust shadows, midtones, and highlights. So in this case, I'm going to start out with, uh, I'll do highlights again. And the highlights are already pretty light. I'm just going to increase the highlights just a tiny little bit. And it's hard to see really anything happening there, to be honest with you. Then I'm going to go to my shadows and just... Bump those to the left a little bit. That'll increase the darkness, which will kind of aid in the contrast. And then I'm going to go to midtones and just bump up the midtones a little bit, something like that. And I also want to warm up the midtones. Not too much, but right about there. So here is the before. And here's the after. So just a minor adjustment, but I always like to start out here. Sometimes it's more intense, sometimes it's not as intense, but it's really whatever the image calls for. I went ahead and zoomed the image way into these trees. Now I'm zoomed in, oh gosh, I don't know how far in I'm zoomed here. 705%. Okay, so that's a lot of zooming. But do you notice here, I have a lot of chromatic aberration on a lot of these trees. And I'm going to show you a really cool technique. And this is one of the new techniques I'm showing you today, how to get rid of chromatic aberration. Now, if you remember, I did run chromatic aberration in Lightroom, but it didn't do such a good job. It did a good job, but it missed a lot. And I'm going to show you how we can easily correct this with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Now, I'm using the CX panel. You may be using the combo panel. They're the same. They just look different. I'm going to click on the actions here and find your correct CA for correct chromatic aberration action. Click on it. And when you do a Gaussian blur dialog box comes up. Okay. And you see this little square right here. This represents this window here. And I wish they let you make this box bigger, but I can't. But what I want to do is the default radius is at 20%. And that's generally a pretty good default radius. Because if you'll notice, my chromatic aberration is gone. If I uncheck the preview, you can see there's all that chromatic aberration. But let me try to explain to you what's happening here and how to really set this up. But 20% or 20 pixels generally works. But let me turn the preview back on and take this radius and drag it the whole way to the left. Now I'm down into the foreground dirt here. So what I want to do is zoom into an area like right here where we can see chromatic aberration. Now that's at 100%. You probably can't even see it. So I'm going to zoom this up to... Uh, 400%. Let's go to 500%. So you can see that in there, right? What I'm going to do is start dragging this radius to the right. Now, one thing I do want to say, if you'll note over here on this layer, it's in a color blend mode. And that's important because when you're in a color blend mode and you blur the image, you're just blurring all the colors into each other and blending them together. And that's how this chromatic aberration is working. So basically what we want to do is start dragging this slider. And the textures also in the color blend mode will remain. So let me start dragging this slider. I'm at 5%. And I'm just looking for any purple fringing in here. And I know it's blurry. But you can also see on the image, you can look out here too and see as soon as it's gone. But we are blurring it, and that's what I'm trying to show you. But right about 13 pixels, you can see that chromatic aberration is absolutely gone. And then I'll, at that point... All you have to do is click OK. But also, you can check the preview, and you can see there's a chromatic aberration, and now it's gone. But something takes place after I click OK, and we'll see how the action changes. So I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice we now have a black mask on this layer, and it's labeled correct chromatic aberration, which is really nice. And also, we're set up with white paint because we're going to paint away our chromatic aberration. Now, I have two methods to show you here. 
I recommend 100% opacity. Now I'm going to make a small brush and you could simply come along and just paint away the chromatic aberration just like that. You see that? And sometimes that's all you need to do, especially on like little branches and things like that. In my case, it's a big area here. And if I zoom out, back out on the image, you can see that tree is pretty much in the distance. So I'm going to get myself a nice big brush and I'm just going to go like this. And I'll zoom back in. I'm just going to go like that. And now let me zoom back in. And as you can see, here is a before. And here is an after. All that chromatic aberration is gone. Now I'm going to use my TK action here and go back to full screen. So that's the first phase. And pretty easy to do. It takes a lot of time to explain it, but to do it, it's really fast. And I love this action. I didn't do a roadmap today, and I know a lot of you like it. I will be getting back to it. But today, if I would have done the roadmap, I would have remembered to do something to set myself up for success. And I forgot to do that. And that is select the sky and the foreground. So let me go ahead and do that now. What I'm going to do is go ahead and click on this icon here to select the sky. We'll save that out as a channel by clicking this icon here. And we'll just call this sky click OK, and then I'm going to go right to Invert. Now I'll save this out as Foreground. I'll just call it FG and click OK, because I'm going to actually need that for my next step. I'm going to go ahead and uh, deselect this selection. The next step is to this sky up here. Seems a little discolored here. And I think I want to fix this. I don't know if Steve used a polarizer or not, but I'm going to fix this right here. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. And to do that, I'm going to use another action. And that's found in the TK actions, obviously. And that is the add color action. So let's click that. And when you do, a color picker comes up. Now we need to pick a color. So I'm going to pick a color in the sky, like this color right here, and click OK. And basically what it does is it gives you a solid color layer in a soft light blend mode with a black mask. And what you're going to do is paint that color right on and fix it. It's really cool. And let me show you how it works. The action also sets you up with white paint. But I'm going to start out at 10% opacity, really slow and build this up. Because you can see the saturation is more saturated right here, but it gets weaker as it goes over. So I'm going to start like right here and just paint across one time. Then I'm going to move it a little bit past that and paint again and just keep coming like this and building this up slowly. And that 10% really helps me. And I can even paint over the building here because I'll show you how I'm going to fix that with that mask. I'm going to show you some new technique for that. And I'm going to paint it a little bit in here. And I'm just looking for the image to look kind of balanced out in the sky area. And again, that 10% is really helping me out. Okay. And maybe in here, I'll just hit this a few times. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here's after, but you see how nicely, but I've overpainted the building. And if we take a look at my mask by clicking this icon here, we can see I overshot that building here, but I'll show you how I take care of that. Let's X out of this color grading tool and let's come to my channels. Now we saved out the sky in the foreground. So let's click on foreground just like that. Now we want to load that as a selection by clicking right here. Now we've loaded that selection, but the marching ants are hidden. Let's even come here and turn back on the actual layer mask itself. And now watch with a black paintbrush at 100% opacity. I'm going to fix everything, even where that tree is. Isn't that cool? So everywhere I overpainted, I'm only adding what I want to the sky. So just like that, we're done. And let's go ahead and look at the image again. And I'm going to deselect my selection. But here's my before and here's my after. So I've repaired anything that I've overspilled. Pretty good little tip, so remember that. And if you want to take a look at that mask again, just click this icon. So there it is. Next, I want to lighten up these clouds over here. They seem to, you know, be low contrast over here. I want to lighten them up. But these clouds, I want to darken. I'm going to dodge and burn all in one layer. Let me show you how to do that. I want to lighten these clouds and darken these. And I want to protect my trees and my house and this tree over here. So how do you think I can do that? Well, how about we set ourselves up for success. I almost forgot to do that, but I did. So let's click on my channel. So let's load up our sky. Let's click on the mask calculator 
and let's click on the X for intersect. I love the intersection. And now let's X out of here. And what we need to do is get some good separation on these clouds. So let's do this. Let's go to our luminosity masks. Here's lights one. Not bad, but let's try lights two. And basically you see the separation I'm getting from the cloud to the sky background. I would like a little more separation than that, but we have these uh, channels up here like red, green, and blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. So let's click on red. And when you do, you notice I get a lot more separation here. And you could go and click through these different channels to try to find more separation. But red's going to be it. Red and yellow is going to give me about the same effect. So I'm going to go back to red. And I can tweak this a little more by clicking on the levels adjustment here. And let's take the highlight slider and drag it to the left. See how I can make those lighter clouds lighter? And then I can darken the darker areas around them by moving the midtones to the right just a little bit like that. And maybe a little more lightness. And I think I'm getting really good separation now. I think that is good. Let's get out of the properties panel here. Now we need to click on equals. And now that is making our selection, but look, we're totally protected on the foreground. That's really nice. Now, all we need to do is we want to dodge, right? So let's go to a dodge tool. I'm going to use the gray layer, 50% gray layer. I'm going to click on the left side of the dodge icon, and you'll notice we're in the overlay blend mode, and I'm set up with white paint. And now at like 10%, I'm going to start dodging these clouds. And I don't have to worry because I'm not going to be affecting the um, building. So I can overpaint here, the trees. And I'm building it up slowly. I probably could have used like 30%. I'm going to go up to like 20% now and hit this a couple times over here. Okay, right in here, maybe here again, here. I think that's good. I'm going to come down lower, make sure this is looking right. Take your time and get it right, but let's take a look. Here is the before, and here is the after. Now, if we want to take a look at this layer, hold your Option or Alt key down and click this eye, and you can see the protection. You see that? Really nice. Option or Alt, click it again. We'll go back, and now we want to burn over here. So let's change the black paint. We can grab this paint icon right here. We'll click on the black paint swatch, and I'm, down, let's, I'm at 20%. I'm going to uh, type my one key. That's a shortcut to go to 10%. And now I just want to darken this up. I'm just going to paint across here just a few times just to darken that up a little wee bit. And now let's take a look. Here is my before and here is my after. But again, let's take a look. Let's option or alt click this so we can see what we've done. And look at all that protection we have. Isn't that nice? I'm going to go ahead and deselect my selection by clicking right here. I almost forgot to tell you about this add color. We could come back to this layer and we can double click this and we can come and alter this. If we're not happy with our result here, we can change. Like if you need more saturation, you can take this and move this over like this and you see it, the saturation will change in that. Or you can adjust this slider like you can change it to pink, change the blue. So you can alter it and try to match it up better. But right about there. And again, if you need more saturation, you can come like this over into more saturation like that. And I think that might look better. And then we can alter this a little bit. And the idea here is we just want to kind of like even it out as much as we can. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to click OK. And if you're too strong, you also have this opacity. You can take it back too if you want to. And I think I might. I might just take it back to right around there. But here's the before and here's the after. So I think that's pretty good. But take your time and try to get this evened out as much as you can. And I'm seeing a little spot here I missed. So I'm going to go back to this mask. And with a white brush at about a real low opacity of 3%, I'm just going to try to fix some of these areas here that just look like I missed them a little bit. I'm just trying to blend this. And that 3% is really helping me to blend that. Okay, but it takes some time to get it right, but I think that looks a little bit better. Here is the before and here's the after. Next up, I want to add some contrast to this road here. It'll darken it up a bit, add some contrast, and I think it's going to be helpful. So to do that, I'm going to get another TK action, and that's the paint contrast action. And I'm going to get black paint. Right now, it's set to 50% gray. I'm just going to drag this down to black and click OK. I want you to notice that this is in a hard mix blend mode with a blank pixel layer and the fill is set at 15%. This is one of those special blend modes that use fill. 
15% to probably 20 to 25% would be tops, and then you can lower it from there. But we're going to start out at 15%. We're going to start out with a brush about 30% opacity. But first off, I want a little bit of protection. So I'm going to come up to Luminosity Masks, and I'm going to get a... That's Lights 1. Here's Lights 2. I think Lights 2 is good. I'm going to modify it. I want to protect some of these areas here. So what I'll do is get a Levels Adjustment, and let's... Take the highlight slider and lighten our selection up a little bit here. And then we can take the midtones and darken it just to protect the edges around here. And I think that's good. So now let's output that as a selection. And now we're going to paint through that selection on to the paint contrast pixel layer. We'll be painting through a selection. So I'm at 30%. So I'm going to start to paint my adjustment on here. And I can be pretty, you know, Pretty loose painting because that selection is really protecting me. I'm going to bump this up to about 40% and hit this area again. And here, I'm going to even go up to 50% and get this over here a few times. I like the low opacity so I can build it up and I just hit over. It doesn't actually add like the same amount each time. There's like a mathematic equation there and I'm not sure what it is. But you get the point. I'm just building it up slowly so I don't overdo it. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. But I like that. It just adds some more contrast there. And I may darken this area up a little bit more. I'm going to go up to 70% and really hit this on the right bottom side here. Maybe down here a little bit more. But take your time. You know, this is this is art. And you're creating a piece of art. So... Enjoy it and take your time. I'm going a little fast because I'm trying to make a tutorial. Okay, again, here is the before and here is the after. I'm going to go ahead and deselect this selection. The next thing I want to do is this front of the house here seems a little bit low in contrast, and I think I want to fix that. And to do that, I'm going to grab an object selection tool. And you'll notice I have it in rectangle. And uh, what I'm going to do is go like this. I just want the front face of this building here. And it does a really good job selecting it. Now, I can also get over here as well. You know, I think I just want this. I'm going to let this stay dark down there. I think that looks good. And I'm going to hold my shift key down and try to grab in here and in here. This doesn't have to be perfect. And in here, I'm going to get this. And how about right in here? See if I can grab that area. Yeah, it's doing a nice job. And I think that is pretty good. I went ahead and grabbed a couple of these other little areas that I missed with that same technique. Now I'm going to go up to my channels, click on my channels and click active selection. Now I'll just simply output that to a color grading tool and I'll go to midtones first. I'm going to lighten up the midtones a fair amount, something like that. Plus, I want to warm up those midtones, make that a little more inviting. And then I'm going to go to shadows and darken up the shadows a bit. And look at that. There's our contrast. Now, I could have added that to my selection, too, if I wanted to. And does it need it? Well, I think it might. So I'm going to go ahead and use the object selection tool and grab this section right here. That selection picked up part of the fence. So I'll hold the Alt or Option key down and subtract that out. And... This fence, too, it got that. Let's get that out of there. Okay, that's good enough. Now, all I have to do is make sure you have this layer mask active. Click on this fill dialog box. We'll fill it with white paint. Click OK. And just like that, it's done. Now, we can deselect our selection. And now, we can see here's the before and here's the after. And if we look at our mask, we can see we have that in there as well. So, there you go. This tree line back here looks a little bit low in contrast. Not the darker trees, they're fine, but the lighter trees. And there's some, you know, low contrast over here in this area right here in the land right here. So what I want to do is paint contrast. And I'll show you a special technique for that. I'll use the same action I did for the road. So let's come to TK Actions, Paint Contrast. There's our blank pixel layer. This time I will use the gray paint. I'm going to click OK. And what I'm going to do is exile the color grading tool. I'm going to come up, go to luminosity masks. Let's get a mids three. We're going to intersect it. So let's get the calculator. We're going to intersect it. So click the X for intersection. I want to intersect that with the foreground. So we'll X out of here. We'll go to my channels. We'll click on the foreground. We'll click equals. And now we have that all selected. But you'll notice all the darker trees will not get much of a selection here they'll be protected and the sky will be protected as well. 
So now at this point, I want to be painting through a selection. So let's click this icon. We'll load that selection. And we're on the paint contrast layer. Now make sure you have your brush. I'm typing B to get my brush up. And right now I'm at 70% opacity. I'm going to type the zero key, go up to 100% opacity. I'll make my brush a little smaller here. And I'm just going to paint contrast right on the trees. And you notice it's protecting all the really dark trees, which is really nice. And then over in this low contrast area over here, I'm going to paint that in as well. And on this land area right here. I want to paint that. I can even paint up on these trees as well because that's part of my selection. So let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. So pretty cool. Got rid of that low contrast. Now if it's too much, you can either pull back in the fill or you can pull back in the opacity if you felt you went a little too strong. And I'm just going to pull back in the opacity just to about like 86%. Here's the before and here's the after. And I like that. With the hard mix blend mode, the opacity is not as aggressive as the fill. That's why I chose the opacity. Now we're almost done. Two more things. I want to draw a freehand vignette. I got my lasso tool, so I'm just going to go like this. Okay, up and out, come to my TK action, go to freehand vignette. It's going to set me up with the right Gaussian blur. I always just accept that, click OK. And here's my before, and here's my after. I'm going to protect my deepest shadows by double clicking on this layer and using blend diff. I'm just going to take the shadow slider, drag it to the right a little bit, and then I'm going to hold my option or I'll key down and split this. This is a regular thing I do now with my vignettes just to protect my deepest shadows and click OK. But here is the before and here is the after. And the last thing I want to do is add a spotlight. I'm going to show you a new action here. I'm going to add a spotlight to this building right here and then we'll be done. I think I'll pull back in the opacity first. Let's pull this back just a little bit. I think it was a little bit too strong. And I think right around here, 31. Here's the before and here's the after. So I don't want to go too crazy there. And now for the spotlight. So what I'm going to do with that same lasso tool is I'm going to draw a circle right around here. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, just like this. It's important that you stay outside of the area when you add the spotlight. And now I'm going to go back to my TK Actions and find Spotlight, which is right here. Click on Spotlight. I'm going to accept the amount it gives me. It usually gives you the right amount. Click OK. And now we can see here's the before and here's the after. But see how that's nicely lit up right there. Now, if it's too much, take the opacity. And I think it's a little too strong. I'm going to drag it back. Let's try 28%. Here is the before and here's the after. But see how it just draws a little bit of emphasis to the building? You hardly know it's there, but if you shut it off, you'd see the difference. But there it is. Now, here's our overall before and after. Let me hit my before and after action. Here is the before and here is the after. But there was a lot of new techniques here today. So you may want to go back and watch this a couple extra times, but I think it'll really help you out in the long run. Well, there it is, everyone. We come to the end of another TK Friday. Boy, I really enjoy TK Fridays, and I hope you do too. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon that every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.